A trip to the beach. Marie loved the beach. It was her favorite place in the entire world. It didn't matter which beach it was. She had visited many beaches in many places, and she loved them all. What mattered to her was the sand between her toes, the sound of the waves crashing, and the wind blowing in her hair. Most of the time, thinking of the beach made her heart feel at peace, and it always made her smile. Now Marie has two young children, and she is pregnant with a third, which makes going to the beach much more difficult than it used to be. She used to just hop in the car and go whenever she pleased, but now it was not so easy. She still loved to be at the beach, but now she had to consider the kids' schedules along with her own and her husband's just to plan the trip. Then Marie and her husband had to get the kids ready to go, get themselves ready to go, and get everyone's luggage packed. Then they had to drive to the beach, and the closest one was four hours away. Marie felt exhausted just thinking about it. Spring break was coming up, and the kids would be off school for a week. She and her husband, John, decided that they would plan a trip to the beach and stay in a hotel for a couple of days. They had not been on vacation in years, and they needed to relax. We're going to the beach for your spring break, John told the children. Yay! The children cried. I want to build a great big sandcastle, said Trevor, the eldest, who was eight years old. I want to find a white seashell, said Kitty, the youngest, who was five years old. I want to drink a cocktail on the balcony, John said under his breath. Marie playfully slapped his arm and reminded him that he shouldn't say such things around the kids. I want to get a nice tan, Marie sighed. They waited and waited, making plans and talking about how excited they were about going on vacation to the beach. They were staying for five whole days. It would be expensive for Marie and John because the hotel was not cheap, but they knew it would be worth it. Spring break finally arrived. Marie woke the children up very early in the morning while it was still dark. She helped them get their suitcases and luggage into the car while John loaded hers and his own. Then they started on the long drive to the beach. For the first hour the kids slept, Marie dozed, and John drove. It was still dark. The sky turned pale blue, then pale pink, then brilliant pink and orange as the sun rose. They stopped at a little cafe to get some breakfast and coffee. The kids ate pancakes, Marie had oatmeal and fruit, and John had an omelet. John and Marie got some coffee to go. Then they piled back in the car and kept driving. Mama, I'm bored, whined Trevor. Count all the red cars, suggested Marie. Mama, I'm bored too, said Kitty. Count all the white cars, suggested Marie. Mama, I'm bored too, John teased. Count all the miles between here and the beach, Marie laughed. As they drove, Marie thought about their third child, who was due to be born in a few weeks. She and John did not want to know whether the baby was a boy or a girl until the baby was born. So Marie had come up with many names she liked. She wondered if Trevor and Kitty would get along with the new baby. She wondered if she would ever fit into her old blue jeans again. She wondered if the child would like sports or if they would prefer indoor activities like reading. Kitty was an outdoor girl, while Trevor liked both but preferred things like video games and cooking with Mama. She wondered if John ever minded that she was a stay-at-home mom. Was he ever resentful that she quit her job to raise the kids? He always seemed grateful when he came home to a clean house full of happy children and a good home-cooked meal, so Marie tried not to worry too much. How many red cars have you counted? Marie asked after a while. Eleven to twelve, Trevor said confidently. Even I know that's not a real number, cried Kitty. 
I counted five. There were more than five, Trevor insisted. You're just saying that because you're five years old. Am not, Kitty protested. But secretly, it was true. Five was her favorite number. Children, don't fight, please, Marie admonished. She could feel a headache coming on, and they still had a long way to ride. She fished in her bag for a couple of action figures and handed them to Kitty in the back seat. Why don't you play with those? Give one to Trevor. The action figures kept the children occupied for a long time. They fell asleep again after that, and it was lunch time when they arrived at the beach. Check-in at the hotel was not until 3 o'clock p.m., so they went to a seafood restaurant to eat lunch together. Marie ordered shrimp scampi, hoping it would not upset her stomach. The kids wanted fish sticks and french fries, while John opted for surf and turf. Finally, it was time to check into the hotel. The hotel lobby was spacious and airy, with many potted plants and lots of sunshine. The weather was mild, and all the windows were open. The lady at the desk smiled a lot. She had dark brown hair pulled into a tight bun at the back of her head, and she wore bright red lipstick. Then they took their luggage to the room, which looked out over the ocean front, and changed their clothes. There was still time to go to the beach. Wait, children, you need to put on sunscreen, Marie said, as Trevor and Kitty ran for the door. You don't want to get sunburned. John, you help Trevor, and I'll help Kitty. Marie took her daughter's hand and began applying sunscreen to her hands, instructing her where and how to rub it in. No one wanted to be at the beach more than Marie. But by the time the children were ready to go to the water, she was exhausted. Once everyone was gone, Marie sat on the edge of the bed in her pink bikini, patting her tummy. She was excited for their third child. But this baby was wearing her out. She felt tired often these days. Her feet hurt. It was hard to eat because her appetite was irregular, and sometimes it was even hard to walk. She would be glad when this baby decided it was time to come out. For now, she would have to be content with taking a nap before she could enjoy the beach. Marie lay down and fell asleep almost immediately. She woke an hour later, sat up with a little bit of a struggle, and stretched. The sun was still out. She struggled to get to her feet, too, but she made it. Marie looked at herself in the full-length mirror in the bathroom and smiled. Some women did not like how they looked while carrying a child, but Marie thought she looked perfect. She put her hair in a ponytail and made her way down the beach. John had rented an umbrella, and the kids were playing with some new friends. Trevor was keen on making the best sandcastle on the beach, and the other children had special buckets for making sandcastle shapes. Kitty was helping because she liked to do whatever Trevor was doing. John was sitting under the umbrella and watching the children, but when he saw Marie coming, he stood up and took her hand and kissed her hello. How was your nap? he asked. Really nice, she panted, out of breath from the short walk down to the beach. I'll be happy to have energy again once the baby is born. Marie walked the rest of the way down the sand to the water. She inhaled deeply, relishing the sweet, salty breeze, whipping her curly black hair around, and the tangy smell of coconut tanning oil someone was using nearby. She curled her toes in the wet sand and closed her eyes to listen to the waves crashing right as a wave broke and washed over her feet. She felt the baby kick. Her eyes opened and she laughed, pressing her palm to the spot on her tummy. Even though she was tired, Marie felt content as she stood with her feet in the surf, looking at the sunset and hearing the waves crash 
and her children laughing behind her. They came back to the beach right after breakfast. The next day, everyone put on lots of sunblock, and Marie took a little nap under their umbrella while John played frisbee with the kids. They ate lunch on the beach, peanut butter sandwiches, cold water, and cold apples from a cooler full of ice. Marie went swimming with Trevor, but Kitty wasn't allowed yet because she was too small. Kitty cried until John started hunting for seashells with her, and then she forgot all about swimming. Marie and Trevor swam past the breakers, where it was easy to just float on the waves like a seagull. Trevor started a splash fight, which Marie won because she was queen of splash fights. After another sandwich and some rest, the whole family decided to go for a walk on the beach. Marie walked arm in arm with John as the kids ran ahead, shrieking and splashing each other and throwing fistfuls of sand until John told them to cut it out. About twenty minutes into the walk, Marie's stomach started to feel strange. It felt tight and it was painful. She stopped walking and grabbed John's hand. I think the baby is coming, she gasped. Kids, follow me, John said. He easily lifted Marie in his arms and began carrying her up the beach. My wife is having a baby, he announced to no one in particular. Our little sister is coming, cried Kitty. Our little brother is coming, cried Trevor. Can someone help us? We're about a mile away from our car. I have to get my wife to a hospital, John cried. I'm parked close by. Let me give you a ride, offered an older gentleman wearing a colorful Hawaiian shirt. John considered him, then considered his wife, then nodded. All right, thank you. Yes, we'd be much obliged, he said. Come on, children. Daddy, we're not supposed to talk to strangers, Trevor reminded John dutifully. And never, ever get in a stranger's car. That's right, Kitty piped up. You're right, kids. This is a very unusual decision, John agreed. But it's okay because Mommy and I are both here. It'll be okay. Just never do it by yourselves, okay? Is Mommy going to have the baby in the car? Kitty wondered aloud. Probably not, the man in the colorful shirt said to her. What's your name, kid? Kitty, she said shyly. Hiya, Kitty. You can call me Charlie. And what's your name, fella? He said to Trevor. Trevor, he said sullenly. Why are you driving us to the hospital? Well, my own wife was in a similar situation, Charlie explained. We were on this very same beach, in fact, over 30 years ago, when she started having our first child. Was it a boy or a girl? Kitty wanted to know. A boy, Charlie said. We named him Samuel, but everyone calls him Sammy to this day. They reached Charlie's car, which was an old green station wagon. John and Marie and Kitty got in the back seat, while Trevor got to ride shotgun. Charlie, hurry, John urged. I'm hurrying, Charlie cried. There's a lot of traffic today. Darn tourists. Hey, we're tourists, Trevor reminded him. Marie was clinging tightly to John the whole time. When they got to the hospital, she was in a lot of pain and could not walk at all. They rushed her in and John followed while Trevor and Kitty waited with Charlie. Charlie didn't mind waiting and keeping an eye on the kids. There were some puzzles and little toys for kids in the waiting room, which kept Trevor and Kitty occupied for a while. But everyone was very excited about the new baby. Trevor kept running across the waiting room and asking the nurse if they could see their baby brother yet or sister. Kitty added every time. It took a long, long time. Charlie got some snacks from the cafeteria because it was dinner time, and Trevor and Kitty got a kick out of eating chips and candy bars for dinner. The kids fell asleep not long after that because it had been a long, exciting day. Around midnight, the nurse woke them up, and she led 
Charlie, Trevor, and Kitty through the hospital to the room where their mom was staying. Marie looked very pale and very tired, but she could not stop smiling. The baby was in her arms, swaddled in a soft white blanket. Children, come meet your new baby brother, Marie told them. I told you, Trevor cried triumphantly. Kitty did not seem disappointed as she scurried over and hopped up on the bed beside her mother to look curiously at the red-faced infant. He's so cute, Kitty cooed. I'm going to teach him how to play video games, said Trevor. Charlie, I can't thank you enough for all your help today, said John. The men shook hands. It was my pleasure. You have a lovely family, John. I enjoyed my time with the kids. Reminds me of when I had little ones of my own. What's his name? Kitty asked. His name is Charlie, Marie said with a grin. You're teasing me, Charlie exclaimed. Not at all, Marie answered. John wanted to call him Ernest if he was a boy, but I thought Charlie was a much better fit. That's mighty sweet of you, ma'am, Charlie said bashfully. If it weren't for you, Charlie might have been born in the sand, John laughed. In fact, we're calling his middle name Beach, Charlie Beach. That's a silly name, Kitty observed. Kitty is a silly name, Trevor observed. Oh, children, Marie sighed with a smile.